We had to run, and by this time um, I had cowboy shoes on, and I was really faster than the civil uh, policeman following me. But the problem was that uh, I ran to um, um, to, just to the nature, and suddenly I fall down, and I found out that he was throwing a nunchaku. No, yeah, this (laughs) to. Just maybe I was looking like a cow. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe because of cowboy. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I have never heard nunchuck has been used on a graffiti artist before ever. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official Street Cop Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Box created. Killer Keller. And we here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London or as central as you need to be. Choose to be whenever you don't want to be anywhere else. Big shout out to the sharers and carers, people that have been clocking us from the jump. We're in a 500 and something halfway mark and it feels pretty good out here. How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. For us that are uh, over here in London, we're going to take it somewhere else. We're going to Deutschland of all places. Absolutely. For a man who's truly outside, out there doing it right now, we're in for a right treat. We have Germany's legend, the one ABC crew inside the place, and he's out on location. How are you doing, my brother? Well, fine, man. Fine, man. Fine. Well, good to hear you. Well, greetings from Munich to London. <laughs> where, where about, what is that behind you, bro? I need to know what's going on here. Uh, this is a, a wall I did for a good friend and professor. I've been to arts uh, school in Munich, uh, and his name was Robin Page. And also his nickname was the Blue Beard because he, well, he painted his ba- beard always blue. Um, sadly, he passed away eight years before, and uh, he's not uh, too much into the um, internet. So if people are not mentioned the internet, the the well, they're really gone. Sadly, yeah. Yeah, that's real talk. He was a he oh. was a founding he was part of a bigger movement an anti-establishment movement correct? Yeah, he was uh, he was born in 1932, so he was into the so-called Fluxus uh, movement, which is also an, an anti-art movement like graffiti is. And uh, today, I made some um, well, the, some parts of the the painting faded away, ex- especially the stamp which is the Bluebeard Art Collection a Museum stand. Wow. It was an idea that art is just for having fun, not just uh, going to museums and uh, thinking like this about pictures. Be quiet. Yes, the chin, the chin stroke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you, you mentioned anti-establishment graffiti. Yeah. Um, that's, that's been graffiti's war cry for a long time. Um, yeah. And in 2024, that's changing somewhat, don't you think, one? Well, for me, uh, graffiti is uh, still illegal art, just like uh, painting the streets or tagging. And, well, it became so big, this movement, when I started in 1983-84, it spread like a virus over the planet. So if you go to Asia... So a lot of parts of uh, South Africa, uh, anywhere on the planet, you can't erase this like like dog shit on your on your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just scrape this off. <laughs> yeah, eighty three, eighty four. What was life like for you in eighty three? Well, it was. Uh, well, basically, I came out of the punk movement, which was also. Uh, very intense idea but when like the first movie came out like white style for us it was just like a electroshock yeah like a mm-hmm. torch and what are these guys doing i also have to do this <laughs> so, yeah by this time it was really quite new because also the authorities didn't know about the legal graffiti on the trains 
And uh, in the early times in the 80s, I think Munich was the first city who had a, a Wendel squad. And uh, by this time, we painted with no gloves, no mask. Like in our days, I know some younger guys who paint DNA free, which means you have to take care about not losing any DNA at the spot you're painting. And what? Wow. Two years before, I was three times at the Bring the Paint Festival in Leicester. Oh, dope. I met some breath guys there and they told me, oh, uh, when the UK, you also uh, get imprisonment for for illegal graph, yeah. Yeah, that that certainly is the case, and and always has been, really. Yeah, you guys don't have that so much, do you? Well, I had a big trial in the nineties. Um, it was my high bombing time in nineteen ninety five, and uh, I did a lot, a lot, and. My style is very unique, which means in the first years I painted uh, style and uh, characters similarly. But when I met my crew guy, Cowboy, mm -hmm. I, stopped, I stopped the styles because his style letters were like, uh, you open the tap of water, there it goes. Shh. So really? by the Just time, flows, just flows. Okay. When, you, um, when you've got like a crew member that... Um, that influences you so much like that does do you find like you take a lot of influence from his style and it kind of merges because that's kind of what crews do right yeah well we were just like um let's say one eye twins uh he did the <laughs> styles and knew what he exactly wanted to have around with characters and he also knew exactly where my my characters will stop uh was, was a perfect couple yeah yeah Whoa, I love those. I love those collaborations. It's like a tag team. Yeah, really. When the crew is also a thing like, like a family, it's not just uh, we do some things together and uh, it's just like a, a second family. Yeah, we help each other, you take care for each other. So dope. When did you start ABC Crew? When did that begin? Uh, that began, I think, in 1987 together when I met Cowboy. And. Um, well, with the first crew members were Cowboy and me, and then they spread to a lot of guys. And uh, also, I'd like to say hello to Whisk. He lives mm -hmm. in London. He was in ABC. Big up Whisk. Uh, That's our peoples right there. Whisk is our peoples right there. Big up Whisk each and every time. Um, what was what was the find the right word for it? What was the? I was going to say mandate. I'm not sure if you know what that word means. Um, but what was the what was the mission? with ABC at the time? Uh, the mission with ABC was, uh, well, a legal crew. We had, like, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the illegal stuff. It was the TSR, the Subway Rockers crew. And just mirrored to the legal part, it was the ABC, where we did big wall productions in Munich um, from 86 to 1990. Um, ABC means art break crew, art bombing crew. Uh, but you know, uh, nowadays a lot of people, younger guys, start with legal graffiti, but mm. graffiti in its purest form is bombing the streets and the trains. Yeah. What was it like in the streets of Munich at the time? What was the what was the general feel of the place? What well, just was the very first beginnings, like uh, London, Paris, Amsterdam, uh, Munich, even before uh, Berlin came up, was one of the, the hot spots in, uh, in Germany where we got a lot of um, paint for illegal stuff from, uh, for illegal paintings for, uh, from permission jobs. So uh, it was a funny time, really as teenagers to to do the shit what was the craziest what was the craziest uh, graffiti story of that time that you can remember the craziest graffiti story maybe one of the craziest stuffs were painted with cover together in the so-called uh, Dachauer Flohmarkt which were huge walls like 15 meters to well 200 and after the legal painting we went out and 
tagging the streets and mm. uh, it was very foggy and we tagged a lot of walls and after 15 minutes we didn't know that we were followed by by civil cops uh, for them i have this t-shirt on you see <laughs> 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 and uh, we had to run and by this time um, i had cowboy shoes on and it was really faster than the civil uh, policeman following me but the problem was that uh, i run to um um to, just to the nature and suddenly i fall down and i found out that he was throwing a nunchaku no you know this? yeah you know this too? <laughs> just maybe i was looking like a cow i don't know <laughs> or maybe because of cowboy <laughs> yeah 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 exactly <laughs> I have never heard nunchuck has been used on a graffiti artist before ever. Well, I hope this is it, this won't be a tip for the civil cops. So. <laughs> exactly, it's a tip <laughs> off. Everyone get their lassos and their nunchuckers. <laughs> <laughs> um, talk to me about the dragon enter and trains. Well, for me, it was um, like I told you, like. Meeting Cowboy in, in 86, 87, I stopped the ladders. And on trains, I had, um, well, the ladders, it's really easy. But the idea is just the ladder go from left to right. It's very long. And I thought about something, um, a character going very long. So the um, my own created uh, dragon was perfectly, for me, the expression for the train. Also with the idea... Like dragons are also a tattoo uh, thing, mm. like tattoos, like tattooing on the steel. Yeah. Yo, that's a unique take on it. I never thought of it like that. And of course, like a, a dragon can go as long as you want across a whole car, a yeah. whole train. Well, like all, all the times in graffiti, I uh, did at three, uh, tried three or four times to do this on the fourth and fifth. I could paint this train, but um, I did one blue one and one uh, pinkish one. And but in Munich, like in most capitals, it's a little thing just to don't let the trains, good trains run, just just buff them. Mm. And by the blue the dragon, uh, they only buffed the face and let it run. Wow. And I was so lucky, uh, just three or four days later I wanted to paint somewhere a train and the checker came back and told me hey Marcus you have the blue colors with you he said hey why uh, you can <laughs> paint uh, the face again to the dragon <laughs> so <laughs> but I forgot one one teeth to the dragon so you can see the di difference but after this they totally erased it damn damn I mean it's that's an iconic moment in graffiti full stop. And I, I feel like, I mean, listen, one, every German graffiti writer that I've had on the podcast, yeah. they, all, they all say that you are a, a huge influence on them, um, an inspiration. And with that comes a lot of uh, focus, right? Because, yeah. you know, you've done this for years. You've had these um like iconic moments, and it could be very easily for you to, you know, fall off or go crazy or you know, because that graffiti has a lifestyle as well. How have you? Yeah. How have you maintained? How have you kept going? Well, a lot of guys of my crew, uh, well, just got to drugs or stuff like this. Uh, even some of them are dead, like soap. ABC, Grace, ABC, um, Maroc. And I think um, it's comparable to, um, well, artists like to go on the top of the mountains where you have the, the top view. And when you're on the top of the mountain and you walk, it's very easy to fall down. Mm. So because when you're, on the top of the mountain, you have the highest feeling, um, the, the the best energy. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's sad that people who are on this 
I know the English word for it. When you're on the on the mountain and you go on and on and on on the top, mm. you can fall left or right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's like you're on a tightrope and you're walking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like this. Do you think that? Do you think that can be said for other art forms? Like back in the day, you know, oil painting was a rebellious movement. Yeah. We are sure it's just uh, the mirror of the society because uh, I did one day I did a picture. Um, the parents um, earn the children. Uh, for example, I grew up in a very uh, nice area. My parents were very good to me, but uh, for the rebellion part, I was just the opposite of my my uh, parents. Mm -hmm. So I think. Especially for graffiti, it's the biggest art, art movement in the history of mankind. Because when I think when in one thousand years, when people look back, there's the biggest art movement around the globe. It's in the beginning. It was really before the internet times. You just know painters from from everywhere. Maybe from Australia, you can phone them, you connect to them, you paint with them, you can sleep at their places. It was just also a form of uh, we're bringing cultures together. Mm. And, and also in Munich, in my crew, uh, in the 80s, uh, I think the biggest, um, were a lot of Turkish guys, uh, Italian, Greece, uh, Yugoslavia. But we didn't thought about uh, the background. It's just mm. what, what you do. It's just, just not about your, your color. The skin, it's just uh, what think about what we have in common. It's almost like a connective spider web of yeah. people that underworld people that know each other and operate yeah. within a particular lifestyle yeah. across the globe. Well, for, for just for, for a hardcore example, two years ago I was in Petersburg on a big. Um, graffiti festival and I met one Russian uh, German guy and he told me he wanted to paint the subway in Petersburg and in Petersburg and in uh, Moscow there's a special subway line for the government which is very deep deeper mm -hmm. than the others and this guy he told me he was able to he didn't know that he would get to the government line and uh, well police get him and for the security Guys, it was just like uh, really yeah. a graffiti guy. If you think about, he can also put some bombs somewhere or do anything like this. And he told me that he, they tortured him for one night. I didn't want to ask him, so if he would told me, otherwise I don't want to hear what the Russian yeah, police yeah, did to yeah, him. Yeah. But in the morning, he had to sit on the table. And one officer was coming in and he had a bullet in his hand and put it on the table and looked him directly to the eyes for 10 minutes. No talk. Just so can you? <laughs> Whoa. Oh, I think I have to go back to my studio because I have only 20 uh, battery left. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. It's all good, man. I just need to cross the road. Okay, cool. Just so we can keep stuff. talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I li like to have more arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, a, like Carly or. Okay, take this, take that. Yo, and see, we are we are on location right now, people. Like, <laughs> this is the first time on podcast, and I'm loving every minute of it. Well, on the walk, you can. I think you can see the wall a bit. Oh, yo, yeah, that looks dope. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's oh, the blue beard. How long did that take? Well, this one was, I don't know, 10 days. But on the right side, it goes on. It's a big picture about uh, 40 till 20 meters. Whoa. About the revolution in Munich in um, 1915, no, after the, no, 1918, after wow. the First World War. It was a, well, a revolution, like um, anarchistic revolution, 
and they all got killed uh, from from uh, right wing guys. Right. Okay. You are you are re you really do go in. You, I mean, you kill murals like you've done some very special murals in your time, haven't you? Yeah. Well, you think about it, you only have one one chance in your life, so you have to really do it massive. So <laughs> <laughs> go big or go home, right? <laughs> yeah, have to be close to the studio. Yeah, man, because for real. You have an old phone and well, an old 10%. battery, old phone. Yeah, yeah, got you. Yeah, but no, you can also see my studio. I tell you what, the camera is looking good, man. We haven't had any problems with this. Big up Zoom. <laughs> oh, yeah. what? Are you enjoying yourself, one? Are you enjoying the uh, the ride of Zoom? Yeah, sure, looks great. I also like to say hello uh, to some old old school guys from. London, maybe you know Mean? Of course, big up Mean. <laughs> yeah, Mean. You also some uh, Dref? Say that again. D-R-E-F, -R Dref. Oh, of course, big up Dref. Yes, absolutely. And maybe you also know Flowers. Flowers. No, I don't know was Flowers. I hip-hop uh, when I was, well, the last time I've been, oh, the, in the, I've been to London in 1991, like this. Mm. Uh, and um, he was selling this A hats, you know, this A hats, uh, which was from Naughty by Nature with a. Yeah, yeah. What what were those hats? That was crazy. They were like tie up kind of top yeah, hats, right? Like, looking like a Smurf, or. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't even. So you can't even find them on like eBay or anything nowadays. No, I think they're gone. But uh, like like everything, I think in two years everybody will hear, wear an A hat again. So. Yeah, yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. But, and comment below, people, if you know a graffiti writer called Flowers in the UK. Uh, big him up, of course. Uh, or her. Sorry, I forgot Tizer. Big up Tizer ID all day. Yeah, that's a great guy. Uh, I met him the last time in I think in Croatia somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't. Uh, and Inky, Inky. Oh, of course, Inky. Bristol Massive. Yeah, absolutely. Inky. Big up Inky. Man, see, you're part of a pedigree where, you know, the people you mentioned there, they all travel. They're, they're you know, they they travel a lot. They're active, um, full production um, levels in the work that they do. Yeah. yeah it's, it's also funny, like, um, I did an art show uh, with the graffiti guys from Italy. And when you see how different the styles are, what people uh, bring out, it's really amazing just mm -hmm. how different uh, graffiti can get up, get up from a simple tag to a, I don't know, to an installation. Yeah, and the people that you mentioned there from the UK, they have, their, they have a very identifiable style, each of them. They've got their own style, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, by that time when I was in, uh, in London with them and I met uh, Mean and Dref, um, it was the time where it was also hard to bomb the trains because of the I IRA uh, security thing. Wow. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll stop you. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking of uh, UK versus uh, well, yourself, talk to me about, here comes a spicy, spicy subject. Talk to me about the battle with Mode 2. Oh, well, it was just, I always say, like a battle. It was, um, it was the, um, what was the name? Uh, I forgot, the V1 battle. Mm. And you, have you ever went to uh, to Russia or maybe Petersburg or Moscow? Or? Yeah, I've been to St. Petersburg a couple of times. So, so you know how big uh, hip-hop and graffiti is in Russia. Most people don't know about this. It's huge. It's really huge, yeah. And yeah. Uh, there was... Uh, Guy with a lot of money who invited uh, uh, a lot of breakers, like uh, the old old school breakers. Uh, it was a real gathering of all graffiti DJs. Uh, it was really massive and uh, oh. no voltage again. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, it was massive. It just uh, it was. Well, they made it out of a battle, but it's just a show, yeah. Wow. And, and what, it was just like seismic, it was huge? 
yeah, really huge. That uh, was over four days. I painted a wall like four till 12 meters, a Ganesha uh, breaking, dancing uh, thing uh, around. And this was one of my best uh, rap performance I've ever seen. It was Big Daddy Kane Ooh. acting around uh, in like an arena around uh, Motu's my mm, painting and it was just together with one DJ and well what's the the goose you know the, the goose bumps yeah. are up <laughs> yeah well it's really amazing how this guy well was able to uh, to make all the guys crazy about 500 people jumping jumping it was uh, I think the best rap act I've ever seen uh, what was also there? Uh, God bless Lord Finesse, you know, Lord Finesse. Wow, you know, and uh, yeah. <laughs> it was like in a, like in a film, like in a James Bond film. And the last day, they had a boat trip from Petersburg around on the river on the party boat. But on the next morning, um, in the morning, I had to get my flight back. So. Um, they drove drove for four hours the lake lake party party and I said to the organizer hey in, in the morning I have to be back I'm on the flight no, no problem no problem wow. so at three three o'clock in the morning <laughs> they just ordered a speedboat <laughs> 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 so Donald D uh, Lord Finesse and some other guys we dropped to the speedboat and just, that's so funny <laughs> so. I think a lot of I think a lot of archive um from the 80s and 90s i i think some of it i think some of the reason we don't have enough is because because everyone was so young at the time they don't yeah. realize how important history is yeah and the other half is just technology there just wasn't enough new technology at the time yeah also also about this but i also know some guys from some eagle illegal train painter who don't take photos they don't care about this <laughs> no are there any um, the say that uh, even the police will make a photo so <laughs> yeah they'll they take the photos <laughs> <laughs> um are there any writers <clears throat> from your era which you think should have carried on writing people that stopped that you think should have continued Mm, maybe Bandu. Okay, yeah, I've, I've heard I've heard the same before. But Bandu, I tried to to, to meet him, uh, but uh, he's somewhere on uh, on the Caribbean Sea or so. But Bandu was really the the biggest influence for for style writing in Munich when when I did uh, styles and characters half half, like I told you. A lot of guys when Bandu was in Munich, mm. um, they had this. Just the styles of the Munich guys just erased on a new level and didn't know where it mm. come from. And mm. now I know that uh, they copied his black book. <laughs> really, really, they jacked his black book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, who were your Who are your influences um, over the Who's Who's your influences been over the years from your side? Mm, well, the influence comes from, I think, um, from life by itself. If if you have an open mind and travel a lot, uh, um, and always, I think it's like a, um, a game of puzzle, where you have this part, this part, and when the puzzle is done, your style can really run like water, because uh, you have to find a unique way um, that nobody else can do because that's your style you you can't be better than your idols mm -hmm. but um i was also deeply impressed by um, comic guys i was also into comic i did a book in the 1988 a mixture of graph and uh comic like boat one boat uh, yeah the, it was the kamikaze book right yeah and yeah this dope. was this book was uh, after uh, in 1945 I had my my highest output on trains and the police uh, well after six or seven house raids uh, 
they uh, there was a trial, no evidence, but uh, they forced some evidences and it was guilty. They had to pay a lot of money, but um, when you pay for it, you can say, hey, this is my train. Yeah, <laughs> and you can make a book out of it. Uh, you have a paid for it. It's like a... Like martial like an investment, art. yeah. Like martial art. If somebody, uh, if if a power comes to you and you use this power and just uh, give it another direction to this power, and it comes back to to the guy. Yeah. Wow, I love I love how your mind works. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for it. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, you know, for its time, the book was, you know, a, a, a kind of pioneering venture, wasn't it? Yeah, it was uh, just a mixture of illegal stuff I did, uh, some parts of the comic story. It's The comic story is about Santa Claus and the Easter rabbit, um, about Jesus is addicted to uh, video games. Uh, they have to save the world, something like this. So some parts in the story are also painted on trains. It's just like a mixture. It's hard to say what it really is, but uh, well, now it's sold, sold out. Only yeah. have two copies left. But uh, like I told you before, it was um, a nothing not to play Dr. Jack and Mr. Hyde anymore. Just say I'm only Mr. Hyde. <laughs> How hard was it to to be at peace with that? I mean, obviously, you had made enough of an impact. With your, with your, you know, Mister Hyde, but, but to make that transition where you're at peace with Jekyll and Hyde, how how hard how hard was that? Well, we always have to switch. So when when I started, um, I started illegal. But my first piece, when I, like I told you, I saw the film uh, Wild Style, mm. I grabbed the key from my my uh, dad in the garage and went to. Uh, a small wall and my first piece was oh i don't know two meters to one meter the letters fast mm -hmm. and, um well i had several illegal names uh walt uh, schneewittchen always different names but in i think in 1987 um uh, some uh, munich graffiti writers were invited to paint pictures for the Bambi film, uh, for lying, what's the English word for it? The film celebration. Yeah, yeah, uh, for the launch, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it was a benefit thing. And uh, after we finished the canvases, um, we had to go in front of a camera and uh, introduce ourselves, who I am, blah, blah, blah. So, um, like I told you, I had, I had no legal name before this until mm -hmm. 1987. And Neon, I think Neon, the whole day there was from Public Enemy number one, one, one. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so influenced by this, by this one, one, that I just stand in front of the camera and hello, my name is uh, one. <laughs> but not like, not like one, uh, because there was an A1 from New York, just yeah. with a W. So it just uh, happened by accident, yeah. Wow, so that's how it came about. That's crazy. Yeah, but I also like the idea of being a public enemy. So <laughs> yeah, that's really very similar to the graffiti thing. Yeah, because in in Munich, till I think till today, uh, in, when you read the newspapers, it's the um, uh, the asocial drug addicted graffiti guys who do damage, and they are just mm. uh, garbage trash. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Do you do you miss those days? Yes, I miss these days, but um how can I say now I'm 56 and I'm really proud to be in good shape or I can do anything I want, but I have this well I think in mind I'm still 17 like this. Mm -hmm. But with with the things you have uh, seen and done in your life, you, you get some people get wise, other people get uh, stupid. But mm -hmm. uh, I really love all the input which came to my life. All I don't want to be. I don't want to be young again. Let's say this: Is there anything you know 
Is there anything that you... Regret's a strong word, but is there anything that you think you're mindful that maybe you should or shouldn't have done? What I like to do, maybe um, paint the space shuttle or something like this. There's some uh, things that I, I love to do, or a big boat, something like this. Um, well, till now, I've really painted all around the world, also in China, which was also funny, wow. two times in China. Uh, for, for, just for example, in, uh, it was... Uh, a thing in Beijing, I think five years ago or six years ago. Um, and we were painting and it was a legal painting spot uh, just in the center of the city. And on the top of us, there was what I still is Asia's biggest LED screen, which is just for protection of the sun. It's about 50 to 200 meters wow. on your top. And they they, uh, they showed while we were painting our artwork also to the screen. <laughs> when you see the artwork, like what? Whoa. Well, they haven't. Thanks. That must have <laughs> been insane. Yeah, yeah, really. But also, um, mm, well, it was all legal graffiti. One one Berlin guy who was with us and uh, taking the streets. The next day, all tags were erased. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, literally, like, wash on, wash off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's one thing about Asia that always impresses me is that you know, there's zero tolerance. They don't even tell you about it. They just fix it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even get disciplined. They, 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 they do it so quickly that you can't even be bothered to do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, no. The, well, the, the hard thing in the Munich now we have a special police law since. One year, uh, which makes a regular police officer running around the street, seeing you, and what's the English word for verdächtige? Uh, um, maybe you could do some crime. You look like you could do some crime. They can get you with no um, prosecutor for some month. Really? Just to jail. Yeah, yeah. If you think about then, how could a police guy? <laughs> How you look like? How how should should he know what I will do in the future? So mm, mm, mm. really a hardcore that um, I also know a lot of hippie guys. So when you speak to guys from the protests in sixty seven years, the German laws always get stricter, 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 stricter after COVID, stricter, 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 mm. and if people don't get up and do like this, it won't go back to a freer uh, way of uh -huh. living. Always get harder, 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 harder. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I think, it, it happens without you actually feeling it as well, doesn't it? It's just ever yeah. so slightly gets worse yeah, and sure. worse. Well, for example, the, the wall I showed you before from uh, Robin Page, um, I also was in London, yeah, before I came to the uh, Art Academy in Munich, uh, went to London, St. Martin the Fields, I think. Right, yeah. Right. And I showed I showed them some stuff I did for the kamikaze book and they just said, uh, Oh, you only work with images. <laughs> yes, yeah, so why not? So so I want to go there, but they didn't take me. So in Munich there was this uh, Robin Page uh, Bluebeard guy and I showed him my my trains. Mm. He said, Hey perfect, come to my class. So <laughs> wow. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, but art school for, for me, I yeah, was there <laughs> for five years, but uh, uh, how can I say that? when The first time when I entered its class, he told me, Marcus, um, we can paint together and drink beers in the pubs, but art school is shit. <laughs> <laughs> so delete yeah, that. But, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, nobody can... Um, can, well, this guy was like a catalysator for me, just not, not mm. like a, a hello, master, hello, master. Mm. You won't get better than your master. And for this time was for me, I was only was there for half a year doing some painting, like rest. And the rest of the time, I was free getting some money to build up something for me. So he was one hell of an influence for you then, wasn't he? 
What? He was he was one hell of an influence on you. Yeah, sure. For example, he also opened my eyes. Um, just tell you one story. He was invited with the other Fluxus guys in Amsterdam. I don't know, 75, 78, like this. Mm. And uh, they were just sitting in a pub with the other Fluxus guys, drinking, drinking, smoking, drinking. So the the guy who gave him the money, what's the curator, he came to the pub and, hey, in the exhibition, there are no pictures or, or no artwork. He said, okay, no problem. We do it. So with the money they got, they asked the, the guy from the pub if they could get the whole uh, pub inventory and bring it to the exhibition so they can drink and smoke again inside the exhibition. <laughs> so, and when the, this, this art critics, oh, yeah, the pub is a, a special place for meeting and community, blah, blah, blah. So most things are just not the way they look like. Yeah? That's hilarious. Basically, they were talking about a pub. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I think the world misses characters like that. You know, people that just, you know, they like to, they like to antagonize and challenge systems. You know what I mean? We're lacking that in the world, aren't we? Yeah. But every generation has to find his, his own way to, uh, to protest. And, well, in the generation right now, I don't see so much like, like in the 80s or in the punk uh, yeah. time. Like in the 80s, uh, just one thing. In the 80s, um, when the punks in Munich, had problems with police, they just uh, throw Molotovs to trains. And in the COVID times, I was together here uh, with some um, football hools who were also uh, painting, mm. and they all had the ACAB <laughs> tattoos around, and we had, um, I don't know the English word, um, at 10 o'clock, we should all go inside. Yeah. So at 9 oh, o'clock, curfew. You said, oh, curfew. Yeah, we are sitting outside drinking together with this hardcore ACAB guys. And at 9.15, police came and said, drink your beer and go inside. And uh, I told them, well, no, I, I will maybe go one minute before 10, yeah, but not. Uh, and these yeah. guys, oh, oh, we have to leave. So in the 80s, there will be stones to the police, yeah, or I don't know anything else, but it's, I think, the, hmm, I don't know what happened. Yeah, I think it's yeah, a think, big brainwash. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a combination of the brainwashing thing with lockdown and even terrorism back in like, yeah, you know, 9 11 days, you know, you bear in yeah. mind, like a whole generation got sanitized on terrorism and Red Bull. <laughs> <Did you remember? laughs> <laughs> and then technology yeah, you came. To, you always have to to, to uh, keep people into fear to to make them like wax. You yeah. should look at this. Well, but uh, I'm not of wax. I'm out of hard concrete stone. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, tell me about your future in graffiti. Because at the age you're at now. With all the credentials, all of the history, all of the um, experience that you have, how do you see the future for one and, you know, ABC? My future, you think? Yeah. Well, I think future would be great because, um, like I told you, the um, compared to the puzzle, my puzzle... It's nearly done and it gets bigger and bigger. And uh, I have so many projects and they all became real. You just have to be, how can I say? Uh, we did a wall, belief in your dreams and destroy the system. You have mm. um, destroyed the system. I mean, not to, but make it better. It's very easy to say, hey, this is bad, blah, 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 but just do it better than the things you don't want to have. Mm -hmm. It's very really, say this is not good, this and that, but for example, when you think basically on illegal graffiti or also on legal paintings, uh, 
it's a present to society. Mm. Yeah. Again. And illegal is a present for society where you pay for it. You you go to prison and uh, maybe, but like on the train, which per day, 1,000 people, 100,000 people have to look at it. That is the, the perfect turnaround of the idea of a museum where not the people go to the art, mm, the art the or goes maybe to them. Yeah. That's a beautiful spot you got there, my brother. Yeah, I'm really glad to have this because Munich is um, um, a city with so much money, but uh, it's really hard to get a real cool place. And mm. especially for art for me, I would love to go uh, to LA maybe, where there's a lot of money and people who have, um, how can I say, uh, um, here there's a, oh, oh, I have to check on my battery. One moment. No, no worry, Pat. Okay, connected again. What's the English word for Geschmack? Uh, Geschmack, Geschmack. Um, taste? No, not the visual, visual taste. What's yeah, yeah, word? I get what you mean. So they don't have, um, uh, yeah, they don't Stop. have a, yeah, they, uh, a palate. They don't have a palate for that. Yeah, yeah. For example, in Munich, when uh, I'm not to any art gallery because uh, you, they only show stuff from other parts where they already have a name. They don't have the boss to show something which they really appreciate. Mm. But yeah, anyway, but, yeah. But I'm really glad to have the studio just in the center of one of the most living. Vivid? No, not uh, vivid. No, vivid is also the wrong word. Um, I'm next to a um, uh, football, uh, eight, uh, 1860, uh, oh, fuck, what's the like stadium? Initial? Like a stadium? Stadium. stadium. Yeah. And this yeah. is one of the most uh, living areas in Munich. So all the time I go around, I don't feel like in Munich. So <laughs> <laughs> I love Munich, man. I, I, lo I, I love Munich. Um, yeah, it's nice, but uh, we're comparable <laughs> to when you go to, let's say, Berlin, everything is bombed. Everything mm. around. There's no here. It's there's so much money to clean up everything, and every uh, building has new color. Um, mm. Even the free spaces are all. Every quadrat meter is done for something. Yeah, there's yeah, no. Yeah. Great chatting to you, Juan. You're a legend, and uh, I know a lot of people out here are going to be really enjoying this conversation. So we must do a part two. Um, Thanks so much, Juan. Big shout out to my Munich crew as well. Okay, big shout out to UK and to London. Have a nice yeah. day, man. Yeah, man. Killer Keller podcast. Ally in was out of fashion. Sharing is caring. You know what it is. Tell a friend to tell a friend. More podcasts on the way. Remember, crime don't pay, but leave it today. You stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Nice one. Easy one. Peace.